In this video, I'll show you how to 3D print and paint Homer Simpson. Woo! Yes! All right! Woo! The first step is to download the 3D file from the website myminifactory.com. I'll provide a link in the video description below. Oh, they have the internet on computers now. Once you have downloaded the zip file, extract the STL file within it and open it in your favorite Slicer app. I will be using an app called Flash Print 5. This step is optional, but for me, I didn't want a figure that was too tall. Click on the 3D object, select the scale button, and set the scale to 75%. This will make the figure approximately 10 centimeters or 4 inches tall. Now click on the Start Slicing button, then the Slice button. Oh, I get it! Once the app is done slicing, click the Slice Preview button. Here we can see it will take about one and a half hours to print. Now click the Send to Printer button. Connect to the printer and click the Send G-Code button. Now just click the OK button and the print process will begin. <gasps> Computers can do that? What are you doing here? So here's the final result after a one and a half hours of printing. Looks pretty good. I'll start by removing any excess plastic left from the printing process. It's really painful! Now I'll carefully examine and sand away any rough spots. All right, Homer, calm down, calm down. I don't feel so good. There appears to be a small hole under his arm. I'll uh, use some putty to correct that. There are several techniques to smooth out a 3D printed model. I'll be using Minwax Fast Drying Polyurethane. Several coats will be required. Usually three to four coats uh, should do the job. <laughs> I wish I had a nickel for every time I heard that. I use a cheap disposable 10 cent plastic brush to avoid having to clean them up afterwards. I'm not going to stand for this. I'm going to call the newspapers, the TV stations, the gas stations, everybody! Lastly, I recommend waiting a couple of hours between coats. Whatever. A little oversight on my part, something that I should have done initially before starting the minwax process. Uh oh. I highly recommend attaching the 3D printed figure to a small piece of wood using poster putty. This will make handling of the 3D model much easier. Interesting. I don't believe it. It's really you. I'll go outside and apply a coat of Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. This will allow me to identify any issues with the Minwax coatings and improve the adhesion of the paint that I'll be applying. I see. Something important I'd like to mention. Oh, now what? Always do this outside or in a well-ventilated space using a respiratory mask. Uh, yes, sir. All right, now let's get started with the painting. Uh, first, we'll proceed with the yellow skin color, which is a very unique yellow. I had to make a mix uh, using DecoArt Sun Yellow, DecoArt White, and DecoArt Scarlet at a mix ratio of 40 to 10 to 1. Are you ready to rock? Cause here we go! So I'm going to start by applying the uh, yellow skin. It took a whopping eight coats before I was satisfied. Uh, here I'm just going to show you the first coat. For me, yellow has always been the hardest color to paint for some reason. Um, it's, it's just the way it is. Uh, I've always had to apply way more coats than any other type of color. I guess white is, is a, a good second, <laughs> but, but yellow is definitely challenging. And unfortunately for me, the Simpsons, their, their skin color is, is yellow. I was trying to be as careful as possible not to overlap on the other areas, which would have different colors. However, since it was the first coat and there was nothing else, I was keeping it fairly precise without going overboard. I did uh, try to trim the beard, but in the end, it was just easier to paint everything yellow and then move forward with that. Boring! 
Interesting little tidbit here. In 2007, uh, during an interview with Matt Groening, uh, it was revealed that an animator came up with the idea for the color yellow. He said he wanted his cartoon to be eye-catching. When someone was flipping through channels, he wanted the bright yellow color of The Simpsons to catch the eye and to make them want to come back and watch it again. You liar! Why would you make up a lie like that? To paint Homer's pants, I went with Deco Art Tropical Blue Color. It required a total of four coats before I was satisfied with the results. Oh man, this is the most exciting thing I've seen since Halley's Comet collided with the moon. That never happened, Dad. Sure it didn't. To paint Homer's shirt and eyes, I'll be using Revel Aquacolor Matte White, as I find it covers very well, but any flat white will do the trick. That's right. I decided to use Revel Aquacolor paints because it'll take less coats. Uh, yes, it costs more money up front, but you save time. Well, we'll have to dip into the retirement fund again. Hey, Homer. What do you want? While I'm painting, sing us a funny song. Sure. Yum, 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 yum. That's a catchy tune. Singing is the lowest form of communication. If you say so, Homer. Next, I'll apply Revel Aquacolor Gunship Gray for his shoes. Only two coats were required, and once I removed it from the base, a few touch-ups and that was it. Darn tootin'. For Homer's hair, I will be using Revel Aquacolor Matte Black. Hey Homer, do you have a family doctor? Yes? What's his name? Dr. Hibbert. Have you ever put any thought of consulting? You know, maybe, uh... Getting some hair treatment? I can't afford it. When I can afford to pay for it, I will. But I can't, so I'm not going to. The other day, I saw a YouTube video where they were using WD-40 to stimulate hair growth. What do you think about that idea? <laughs> oh, you must be mad. I find uh, using a simple toothpick is often sufficient to get the job done. It's very precise. You can use an ex exacto blade to make it even more finer. I see the light! To paint Homer's beard, I um, tried several colors, uh, doing different mixes with different types of paints, and ended up using Folk Art Matte uh, 602 Country Twill paint color I got at uh, Walmart. Holy moly! I ended up applying just two coats, which was more than sufficient. Okay, people, let's keep this short. We all want to get home to our families. Yes, yes, Homer. We're almost done. Don't worry. We're, it's, we're getting to the end. I removed Homer from the base, and all that's left to do is paint underneath his shoes. I'd just like to take a moment to uh, thank you for watching my video, and if you haven't done so already, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, also very appreciated. Thank you. I told everyone about this place, and they're all going to support you. As with any artwork that I do, I always uh, sign and date it. I'm returning outside. I suspended the uh, 3D figure with a fishing line and two helping hands. This is a highly sophisticated do -wacky. If you don't use it responsibly, kablamo! Yes, of course, Homer. <laughs> I'm using a Krylon matte finish, uh, transparent finish, to just protect everything, seal everything and give it a nice even coating. I waited about 10 minutes and applied a second coat just to make sure I covered everything. And now, the grand finale. This was a fun little project that took a week to do at a very relaxed speed. Printing the 3D model was a breeze with what I consider a very good print requiring no supports and very straightforward. There were a few challenges when mixing colors for the yellow skin and especially to find the right color for Homer's facial area. My only regret is at the end when I used a spray of matte finish. I think a semi-gloss finish may have been more appropriate for a cartoon character. Something I'd like to test in a future project. And with that, any last words Homer? Yeah! <clears throat> I am the champion! I am the champion! No time for losers! Cause I am the champion of the world!
<laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Hasta la vista, baby.